Ciao a tutti. My name is Caesar. I'll grant you tips that will benefit you in your time studying in Italy. Hello, my name is Neon. I'll play as a co-host. Wait, what? I am Chocodo. Go co-host. No. <sighs> I guess I'll do the post-production. That's the spirit fill of Diapsid. Ragazzi, andiamo. Tip number one. Bring a tote bag. Plastic bags cost money in Italy, so you'll save a lot of funds along with baby sea urchins. But if you don't also want to hold all of your friends' belongings, a nice strap-on bag will carry your essential luggage while freeing your opposable thumbs and reducing pickpocketing. Tip number two. Pack lightly. No one cares if you wear the same clothes every week since all your abroad buddies will be in the same monotone boat. Pero si te quieres ver muy guapo, usa una chaqueta de cuero. Seriously though, the smaller bags you bring, the easier it will be to move. And the more space in your bags, the more you can bring back. Feel free to dress nice, all the time. Do not even bother to pack a pair of leggings or pants. Italy does have an unspoken higher dressing standard than the, what the majority of us are used to. You can always buy the latest European trends and what you want or need in one of the large cities or the market. Speaking of markets, there is one every Saturday morning on top of everyone's favorite hill since it's perfectly flat with no slope or hope. No hope? I said what I said. There is also a mega market in Pesado for two days at the beginning of the semester. Check in with the GEV to guarantee the date. Also remember when packing to refrain from bringing certain electronic appliances. Italy uses the Type F adapter with two prongs, which is the ungrounded version, and the Type L adapter with three prongs, the grounded version, rather than the US's Type A and B adapters. I utilize mostly a Type F two prong since they can fit both in the two prong and three prong plugs, but not vice versa. However, you should be fine with a three prong adapter as most outlets accommodate the newer three prong grounded version. The voltage of Italian plugs is 230 volts, compared to the 120 volts of the US. So don't bring anything that can't handle that. Some devices already come with a voltage converter, so double check with yours if that is the case. Usually modern laptops and cell phones should be duty benny. Tip number four. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. Don't hesitate to talk to everybody and make friends on the first day you are there. Three months is a long time, and drama can ignite if given the fuel to breathe. For all intents and purposes, you are here for yourself, so don't let anyone else ruin it for you. Tip number five. Italy is a country where the main mode of transportation is your obligate bipedalism, so practice. I recommend going around campus without taking a runner or driving. Take the stairs, go up steep slopes, run through Government Canyon, OP Schnabel, Eisenhower, or anywhere, just walk and run. Prepare yourself mentally. That first hill in Urbino with your suitcase is rough, but it will get better, we promise. No. The daily school commute is 30 minutes. Beautiful, but you won't enjoy it if you're out of breath. Start wrapping yourself around the idea that public transportation will be your best friend, since it is so good. It really puts our VIA buses to shame. Tip number six. Research places you are interested in visiting before you go, so you feel awe instead of lost. Knowing the past makes the visit more valuable and astonishing. You will have the opportunity to travel on weekends and for the one week break. So travel as much as you can, even if it's just to neighboring towns. Tip number seven. With shopping at markets, don't hesitate to haggle and barter. Some may try to rip you off or just be creepy, so be wary. And always have the company of at least one partner along with physical cash since you can actually buy things with coins. Excuse me, uh, senor, do you want this wallet? No, thank you. I'm Are good. you sure it's real leather? I'm okay. I, I can prove it. No, you don't got to prove nothing. I gotta go real pay. Italian leather. I got to go See, feed my walrus, sir. I gotta... it, w it won't burn, senor. He's hungry. Look, let me, let me show you. Real leather. It's oh. only 50 euros. I mean, that is cool, but 50 euros... It's but just 50 euros, sir. Are you interested? No, I'm not. All right, for you, my friend, this could be 48 euros. It'll be easy. Just cash right now. 48 euros. No, I got to go feed my virus. Are you are you Mexican, <laughs> sir, or Arabic? No, I don't know. I think I have something to... your mom would like. Just wait here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Tip number eight. Speaking of traveling alone, refrain from it, especially in new places and as a woman or any other vulnerable identifying individuals. Side note, being gay is okay in Italy, 
And if you must travel alone, be vigilant of your surroundings. Know where your important stuffs are and make it difficult for pickpocketers by using a forward resting strap back. Tip number nine, go out. Italian cities at night are a dream, especially after it rains. Also, when you go clubbing the night before a large assignment, such as your sketching samples, presentation, reflection paper, mandatory video, or obligatory 200 eye naturalist observations are due, please protect your friends. Don't leave anyone alone, especially when their motor skills are failing them. Stay as a group and have at least one to two defenders with you. So when someone becomes too persistent towards your buddy, you can put them to the side to dance or get more drinks or post up if things get too bad. Take care of each other, please. How kind of you, Neon. Of course. Now, a brief moment from our sponsors. Do you want to travel to Italy, Matusse, Alverde, Alora? Then apply to the Gilman Scholarship. They are a federal organization promoting U.S. relations with other nations to boost their collaboration and the exchange of cultures. They could grant up to $4,000 for your travels, and if you are military, you can apply for more. Once accepted, you will have to answer a few surveys along with carrying out a service project after the abroad program. UTSA's Andrew Chapman is a great help, so please reach out to him for essay writing tips. Neon and friends are not sponsored by Gilman Scholar Program and Affiliates. Tip number 10. Practice a bit of Italian before you go to Italy, even though you don't have to know Italian to get what you need. It helps to at least have a basic knowledge of Italian, but you'll survive without it. A good amount of people speak English and Spanish. But knowing some Italian without Google translating everything will smooth interactions and make you feel more confident. Plus, Italians appreciate when you attempt to speak their language and immerse yourself. Knowing Spanish helps bunches. However, there's some rules and meanings that do differ a bit along with some words being leagues apart. So a word that is the exact same pronunciation in Italiano y Espanol is burro. But in Espanol, this is a donkey, while in Italiano, it's butter. A word that is completely different for all three languages is bed for English, cama for Espanol, and letto for Italiano. A word that's exactly the same for Espanol and Italiano is triste, which still means sad for English. A word that sounds similar but is slightly different meanings is Negocio, which is a business in Espanol, or negocio, which is a store in Italiano. So it's closer to Spanish's tienda. With that said, don't say moto grazie, which technically means much thanks, since it comes off as sarcastic. So say grazie mille, when you really want to express your gratitude towards people. Another word Nazi say is... <laughs> Chocolate, go wash that dirty mouth. <laughs> And now, Neon, go explain how Italian works. How Italian works? Go say ecce domanda, Shimia. Pero. Some basics include buongiorno, buonasera, buonanotte, ai dei occhi carini, a dopo, scusami, avete bani, dove sono i gatti? When asking for food, say, posso prendere? Insert food item. Per favore. Okay, some pronunciations are different from English and Spanish pronunciations, so let me clear this up. C, like the letter C alone, when followed by an E or an I, makes a CH noise, like cheese. So example are CHE, which means there is, or I in Espanol. Or CHITA, which is city or ciudad. C, when followed by an A or O, makes a K noise, like in cat or amico, amica. G follows a similar rule, so followed by an E or I, it makes a J sound, as in jackalope or leger and legi, while an O or A makes a G sound in gorilla or lego. CH makes a K noise, basically the flip from English, so the word for who is ki, pronounced like the word ki. GN, the acronym for good night, makes a piñata ng noise, so it's not lasagna it's lasagna and bologna italian has many words where they have an extra consonant compared to their spanish counterparts like apartamento apartamento y gato gato para mis personas que en habla español double l sound like what an l sounds like in english as in sorella or which is hermana sister or cavallo which is caballo or horse the word for here is gui but you don't pronounce it as you do in Spanish, aquí. 
Italians pronounce their QUs like English speakers, like the word question or comunque, which means anyway. Lastly, plurals work differently. Like Spanish and Old English, there are genders to words, but unlike adding an S or an ES, as you do in Spaniolo and Inglese, Italians have masculine singular words ending with an O and plural with an I, while feminine words singular end with an A and a plural with an E. There are exceptions and many more differences and beautiful caveats of this tasty lingua, but this is already too long, so let's get to the other tips. Tip number 11. Get used to secondhand smoking in the absence of lines, and cars driving at speeds that seem to ignore the existence of pedestrians. You can't cross safely, but make sure you show dominance by walking with a dead stare into the windows of Le Machine Pochina. Also, here's a tip that most will underappreciate. If you have restroom anxiety, you are in luck. Italian restrooms are so much more private than the basically wallessness of American public restrooms. Although there are several places where you may have to pay to use the restroom. Also, I could be wrong on this, but I feel there is not as much standardization when it comes to toilet flushes, sinks, and tubs, or any of the handles you use for such appliances. So have fun figuring out how to use something for each new region. Don't be shy to try the boudets. Tip number 12. Italians don't know what spicy food is, but they also don't practice excess consumption, so thankfully they have less salt and sugar in their foods. Explore the world-renowned gastronomy of this region for sure but definitely try other cuisines when in larger cities you'll thank us don't be afraid of calories because you're losing them as quickly as you're gaining them you will lose weight so bring a belt or buy one in florence prepare yourself for the lightest smallest breakfast of your life although it is also the best coffee and pastry ever buy fresh fruit cheese and nuts at the market and have them on hand you can also get takeaway from the cafeteria, a ristorante, using porta via per favore. But most food in Europe is bought to eat then and there, or within the next couple of days, compared to America's copious amounts of food waste for buying in excess over long periods. Do not give tips. Just don't. The stability of the ecosphere depends on it. The real reason is because it's just not a cultural norm over there. Use cash for anything 10 euros or less, just because it's a polite thing to do. Since credit card machines or debit cards do take longer and it could just be annoying if there's a line waiting for you. And keep all receipts or they may send you to Prisioni. Also, do not skimp on gelato. It's the best and you need to try every flavor at least once. A wise man once told us the best gelato shop was the one right next to Porta Santa Lucia. He was absolutely right. Those biscotti are the cherry on top. Try every wine and coffee you can. You'll find some you dislike, but are bound to find some you adore. Take a couple of hours at lunch and dinner and appreciate the slow-paced lifestyle. Demensa is not known for the food, but for the memories made going to Michi. Accept every opportunity presented oh, to you and try to travel as much as you can. Oh. Don't waste your time staying in the dorms. Dorms are for sleeping or homework, or staying in when it rains wind. Dorms are also for... Stop it, Neon. Jeez, I was going to say playing cards in a common room. I mean, the walls are paper thin, so please be mindful when having music or talking to friends or other activities, especially if it's late at night. But Caesar is right. Don't waste time binging shows. You can do that at home. Explore the place's grand architecture, beautiful paintings, and of course, bountiful biodiversity. Put your phone away and take pics only after you have the chance to pause and really look at your surroundings. Your photos won't do justice to what you see and feel. Don't be afraid to try new things, whether it be drinks, food, or even going out, because when is the next time you can do this in Italy with a tailored itinerary and helping hands? This is a new land. Please cherish it, because it will be over before you know it. So make the best of the adventures you have and the tremendous personalities you will encounter. Ciao, ragazzi.